Next we have uh, Horea Christian, and then after him. Oh my, do you guys have, uh, yeah. This is what we have. Uh, um, after him we have uh, Bhargavi uh, Krishna. Are you around and available? Yes, no. Okay. Um, then instead, uh, we will have Matt Craig. I know he's around somewhere. Yes? Yeah, okay, great, thanks. Okay. Cool, so uh, my name's Christian, and I'm a neuroscientist and a molecular cell biologist. I'm also a contributor to a number of free and open source projects, including a few Python projects and the amazing Gen2 Linux distribution. And something else which I feel very deeply about is uh, freedom and open source in publishing. So I'm going to talk to you briefly about reproducible self-publishing. Um, reproducible has become a bit of a buzzword, but the, I think the highest level which you can hope to get at from the point of view of reproducibility is to have a reproducible publication, simply because very often this is how you communicate, and ideally you would be able to pull the communication tool, the presentation locally, and edit something in there to see if you can look at the results differently given the analysis tools and the data which are either shared or made implicitly like uniquely identifiable. Uh, it's a bit of a hot topic. Some people have already been working on uh, things like these and they've been calling them re-executable publications. I think it's maybe not yet necessary to, to balkanize the, the word reproducible, but anyway, there we have it. And uh, this is a recent publication which I think is very good. And just let me drag it to the screen. There we go. Yeah. So it's in F1000, it's like the 1000 uh, fun uh, functional connectomes, and if you can see the title here, uh, well, you can't. Anyway, it's about, uh, it's about publishing a paper which is re-executable given the code and, and data which is free and open source. Uh, I've been doing the same with very many of my presentation tools, including my master's thesis a number of years ago, posters, presentations, and so on. Here's like a brief example of that. Yeah. There we go. This is a poster I presented at another conference not long ago, and all of the figures here, except the histological figures in the first panel, are automatically generated from Python functions, which are tracked along with the document and placed inside so that whenever I recompile the LaTeX document, the Python code gets called again and the, the figures get updated to the newest status. The way this looks like is very, very simple, actually. Have a look here. Uh, oh, okay, this, this is a bit squeezed in. Anyway, on this line, I import, so to say, a figure from this container with this identi identifier, and the, the code, the Python code, is tracked in a separate module here. Uh, the software which I use for this is Python Tech, which I didn't write myself. It's written by Geoffrey Poor, who is here with us today. Are you here in the room, Geoffrey? Over there, so if you feel you want to give him a round of applause, please do, because the software is amazing. <laughs> And basically what we're trying to do, and the reason I'm giving this lightning talk, and I hope he will find the time to, to give a short presentation as well, maybe tomorrow or before the sprints, is because we want to organize a sprint in which we take this infrastructure and we try to set up a repository where you have like your given uh, Python functions, which generate your amazing figures, which you can then typeset into different documents which you might want to share. Because this is a very common use case. You have your five or six killer figures which you want to present in, in a presentation to your colleagues and maybe at a conference, in a poster at a conference, and maybe in an article draft. Ideally, you can manage the Python code, the contact, con content completely separately of the typesetting, and that's what we're looking to achieve. And if you'd like to join us for the sprints, I'd be very, very happy if you do. And that's about it. Thank you.